Hello, welcome to Notes to My Legal Self. Together, we explore topics of interest to in house lawyers. We cover career, practice tips, leadership, the future of law, mental health, legal tech, and much, much more. Know someone who'd make a great guest? Let us know. Self nominations are encouraged, they're an act of courage. Want to get the most from this conversation? Ask questions, comment, like, follow, say hello. In short, engage. Finally, have fun. In-house legal practice is a serious business, but you don't have to take yourself seriously. Let's begin. Here's your host, Olga Matt. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us see you. Uh, it only took me two years to have a, an intro into my conversations with amazing guests and about 100 episodes, but the good news, I eventually learned, and so here's a product of my learning. I have a fantastic guest with me today, and without further ado, I will let Alex, Alex, welcome to the show, introduce yourself. Please share who you are and uh, what you do. Sure. Hi, hi, Olga. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Alex Kachaturian. I am a director in the Office of Financial Innovation at the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, or FINRA, and I'm based in Washington, D.C. So you are my first regulator on the show. Uh, it is also, so there's a lot of firsts in this episode. It only took me about 100 episodes to talk to a fantastic, hardworking regulator. So, so let's celebrate that. Um, Alex, I've known you for a long time, and I've seen you do quite a lot of exciting things. Um, before you got to FINRA, and I will definitely ask you what FINRA is, uh, how did, what was the scenic route? What did you do before? Yeah, sure. So my, my first, uh, first job out of college, I worked at a financial services firm in, in New York. Uh, from there, I went to law school and, and got a, a graduate degree in international affairs. Uh, from law school, I came here to Washington, D.C. to work at an um, international law firm doing uh, global dispute resolution, so uh, investment treaty disputes. And it just so happened that my main focus was financial services disputes, sovereign bonds, things along those lines. Uh, so I used that experience to go work at another U.S. regulator uh, doing international issues. And about five years ago, I came here to FINRA to the Office of Financial Innovation to focus more on technology issues. Wow, what a great journey. Um, I love it. Um, very focused and, uh, and, and very exciting. Um, let's talk about FINRA. You know, many of us are familiar with FINRA, uh, but for, for those folks who aren't, you know, what is FINRA? Um, and uh, what is the FINRA's Office of Financial Innovation, where you are a director? And um, just tell us more so people situated uh, in the organization and the role of, of your department. Sure. Uh, so, so first off, FINRA, we are a securities regulator. Um, we're not technically part of the United States government, but we fulfill a governmental role. We're statutorily overseen by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, right, the SEC. Um, technically, we're a self-regulatory organization or an SRO. Uh, which means that we have the power to create our own rules and, and regulations, which we'll, we'll get into that shortly of what this project we're working on now. Um, the core goals are FINRA are really investor protection and market integrity. So we, you, do, you do examinations of, of broker dealers, um, look at things like are risks adequately disclosed to investors, um, are, are marketing campaigns, are they fair and balanced? Did firms conduct sufficient due diligence for the products that they offered? And uh, the office that I sit in, the Office of Financial Innovation, um, our role essentially is doing, doing research and trying to understand and anticipate and foresee the trends that will hit the securities industry either in the near term or in the longer term. And we, our, our job is essentially to understand those issues and communicate them up the chain in the organization and across organizations so that our examiners, when they go do exams of broker dealers on site, if there's a new technology, a new product, a new trend, um, they're briefed on it, they're familiar with it, they're aware of it, and they can improve and weave that into their, uh, their examination process. Wow, that's, that's a big job for, uh, I would summarize it that 
is right is an important regulator <laughs> so a very important body that um, that helps us all and many lawyers uh very much are aware and and uh part of the conversations uh, of the very important body um so the fun fact is that alex and i have known each other for a long time and the one thing we have in common which is not something that no, normally you would predict is the interest in the future of law the tech part of it um, it's usually not an intuitive step for folks to associate the uh, regulator or regulator type bodies with future of law and technology and innovation and um and i know for a fact that there are a number of regulators who are building uh the future of law and and finra is one of them so alex i would love for you to share about your sort of interest and passion for the future of law and specifically the work you have been doing on the regulatory taxonomy yeah sure so um as i explained earlier our job is essentially to, to understand trends and to brief our organization so that, that we're aware of them um one of those trends that we've been looking at is is a space called regulatory technology or reg tech and that's the use of technology to facilitate regulatory compliance another area under that reg tech umbrella is called soup tech or sup tech depending on where you're from and how you pronounce it uh, supervisory technology, essentially, and and what that is is that's the use of regulate that's the use of technology by regulators for the oversight of markets. Um, so, what is a, you mentioned a regulatory taxonomy? So, our office mostly, like I said, we we do the research on the trends and we try to understand them. In in this instance of of creating regulatory taxonomy, I would say played a slightly different role in in which we sort of created. Uh, what I hope will be a, a trend, and that is um, we created a regulatory taxonomy and started a machine readable rulebook initiative. So I'll, I'll just start with the part of the regulatory taxonomy first and tie that into your question. So uh, a, a taxonomy, the way we define it, the way we see it and understand it, it's a hierarchical classification of key business, legal, and regulatory terms. It's essentially a form of indexing um that that we think sir can serve as a novel way for researching the the finra rule book um it's a novel way for researching the finra rule book but it's not a way a novel way for finding information online if you can think of a typical e-commerce experience right if you're going on uh macy's.com and you were looking for a particular product you'll click different uh categories you know except if you want a hat you'll click accessories, you'll click hat, you'll click wool, you'll click a color, you'll click a brand, etc. That narrows the universe of say thousands or billions of products on that website to the 20 or 30 or, or even less that, that match your search criteria. So imagine taking that uh, use case, taking that experience, that search experience, that user experience, and applying it to uh, something uh, I'd say more important, but maybe less exciting for, for people who are less intuitive, which is understanding um, regulations and which regulations may potentially apply to you. Um, I just love the analogy of Macy's.com uh, in the context of FINRA. Let's just reflect on the classic moment we just had. Um, you know, I've, I have predicted that regulators would actually be the biggest consumers of the disruptive technology, especially those um, disruptive technologies that allow sort of real-time uh, supervision and, and uh, in real-time sharing of information. And I think we're definitely in the beginning of that. Um, and I do think that sort of financial applications uh, are, are very important in, um, in, in, in that trend. Um, you mentioned uh, FINRA's rulebook. Um, just for, you know, to make sure that everyone is familiar and on the same page, what what is this, Alex, and and, and why is it important? Right. So, uh, so our our the the Finra rulebook covers a host of of regulatory obligations for broker dealers. So these are our you know registered entities that are registered with us to provide brokerage services to you know to U.S. customers. Now the uh, rulebook initiative, or we call it a machine readable rulebook initiative, it has three. Uh, sort of key components. The first is the creation of this regulatory taxonomy. So think of you know this hierarchical classification, right? So think of that as a, a language, if you will, right? It's a language that was created, and and I, I want to emphasize that this wasn't something that we 
you know, through a, a NLP tool, right, a, a natural language processing tool to comb through text. Um, this was a human effort, and it wasn't just just any old humans. It was Finra attorneys, um, including myself and, and highly other... educated, <laughs> very dedicated, and driven people who who really want to make sure that everyone in the marketplace benefit from knowing what's there. Sorry to interrupt you because I felt like I'm in a better position to to describe you more fully. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's it's not 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 just that. It's that people with day to day experience with the the Finra rulebook that can provide context of maybe a, there's a, a business or regulatory term that's not explicitly in the text, but if you're an attorney that knows what that obligation is or that business term is, you can create that tag and apply it to a rule. So first is creating the taxonomy. The second is we we created this. Uh, uh, search tool. We call it the FINRA rulebook search tool. Of course, we have to give it an acronym first, uh, and uh, as, as all good regulators do. And, and, cert, and first is that sort of e-commerce experience of where you click the different boxes, and it can narrow down the universe of potentially applicable rules to the fact pattern that you're searching for. Um, that can help firms save resources, time, etc. And lastly, uh, so there's a taxonomy, there's first, and then there's the application programming interface or the API. Um, and this is uh, all the credit for this goes to our technology colleagues who essentially created an automatic feed where firms who have their own APIs can link to the FINRA API, essentially pull that rule content, all of those tags, all of those taxonomy terms applied to the rules and automatically link it from the FINRA API to, to their own internal, uh, say, policies and procedures. Um, they can get automated updates and automatic, uh, you know, uh, information uh, about rule changes or tag changes or things like that. And that can help with, uh, you know, keeping a pace with, with, with change and changing rules, particularly if you have multiple jurisdictions that you're seeking to comply with. I just love it. The, the, the concept of getting your rules updated real time via APIs, it doesn't get better than this. Um, so cool. Um, as you started talking about the, read, the machine readable rule book initiative that started in, in October, I want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, how did it start? What is it? Where do you think it's going? I know uh, there's very bright, dedicated, highly experienced humans that are involved, but I'm just curious, kind of what is the context for that? Sure. So I think the, the impetus generally behind it is that the securities industry uh, it's increasingly relying on technology uh, to improve internal operational functions and to improve regulatory compliance. So we we believe that this initiative, it, it supports those efforts by providing, you know, our own technology based tools to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of compliance efforts. So the journey started actually the, the day I walked in the door uh, to FINRA when my boss said, hey, uh, can you look up? Uh, you know, XYZ, one project. Oh, and uh, we might want to develop a machine readable rule book. Can you, can you do some work on that? Of course, you know, I didn't quite know what that was. Uh, took some time to, to research it. And we, uh, we put something out in the public space after, you know, doing our own digging and, and due diligence. We put something out in the public space to explain what a, what a taxonomy is, just like I explained now. Um, and essentially asked the public, is this, is this a worthwhile effort? Um, is this something that the industry wants? And the, the response we got was yes, um, yes, but start small. So we started a pilot um, that lasted from 2018 to 2019. We demoed the pilot. Um, we did a cost benefit analysis, which is something a lot of regulators do to essentially quantify the, the effort and determine how much, how much savings we're really talking about here in some sort of tangible uh, numerical concrete form. Uh, after receiving positive feedback on the pilot, we moved to full-scale, full-fledged development where we had a dedicated team um, locked in and working on a tagging a broader subset of the rules more, more completely. And we linked up with a, reg a prominent reg tech firm in, in, the, in Europe, and they helped us essentially validate our tags and validate our process and test it and build a user interface that we could demo uh, and you know test internally into certain external constituents. Um, and then we built out a, built out the tool ultimately on FINRA.org where it sits right now. Oh, wow, I love it. I mean, it sounds like everything you learned in law school, right? 
<laughs> yeah, some of it, some of it. The technology so, part, right? <laughs> yeah, not the technology, but the others. Some I, I love that, but that's actually the interesting part, right? Um, you know, we, we, we increasingly hear in-house lawyers talk about kind of learning technology on the job. Um, you know, you don't usually hear regulators. How was that journey? Like that's the part when you walk in and you bust up, oh yeah, let's do machine readable stuff. What is your first reaction? What did you do? How did you go from there? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, the the first reaction was, uh, you know, a, as a lawyer, you know, when you you write law review articles or briefs, you always want a source to cite to. So I think the first challenge was there wasn't many sources to cite to. There, there wasn't a whole lot of. Uh, Where did the president go? <laughs> <laughs> so there, there, there wasn't a whole lot to cite to. So I think that was uh, that was a challenge, but it was a challenge that I was excited to accept. Um, you have to put your creative thinking hat on and get to work and you know kind of going to your your question you know no i didn't learn as much about technology or especially I, since i went to law school a little bit ago I've, I've i've been i've been working for a few years now as, a, as an attorney i imagine there's more technology offerings now in law school um but where it did help was uh i i am technically an attorney i, I have a, a legal background of course so my day-to-day -day practice isn't practicing law per se but uh, I have a lot of training in, in, you know, legal services and in regulatory analysis. So that, that bedrock, that foundation was very important in looking at and trying to understand basic legal obligations that I think every attorney uh, probably starts learning at, at 1L as a 1L. So I think that the background of, of general legal principles was, was really, really important for me to kind of lean on to help develop this taxonomy and work with with the real experts who are our, our colleagues in the general counsel's office who, you know, many of them wrote these rules and interpret them multiple times every single day. So um, definitely uh, that that JD was definitely came in handy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that, that, that's probably the most important part. I do find that anyone who is doing anything innovative with technology in the end uh, relies on experts. And, and the experts come in a couple of forms. There's sort of industry experts, subject matter experts, there's technology experts, and, and that itself an, an important skill. The person who can collaborate with and, and understand and speak um, diverse languages of different folks, you know, contributes a lot on the team. Um, have, you, have you found that um, any lessons in, in sort of being that intermediary between technologists the subject matter experts, perhaps even industry, when you were soliciting feedback, um, were there any learnings there? Uh, yeah, learning how to kind of take everyone's viewpoint and uh, I guess compromise in some ways is, is is the right word. Take the the viewpoints of the technologists who are very focused on you know user interface, user experience, right. Um, the fact that everyone's, you know, quickly looking, no one has time, everyone quickly wants an answer and a really easy, intuitive user interface and the real nitty gritty, uh, technical, uh, very formal, specific legal analysis um, and, and making sure that this is a tool that, that people understand that, and this isn't a robo lawyer, it's not guaranteed legal advice, it's a tool that, that's, that's meant to help. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of bridging that gap of of having a, a supreme user interface that's going to actually work and be used by people, um, capturing the, the legal obligations correctly and accurately, um, not being sure that the users understand what the, the use actually is for. Is it, again, to help, not to uh, not a binding uh, assertion of any sort of obligation, et cetera. Ultimately, it's incumbent on all market participants to ensure their compliance. And really merging all of those interests together to to build a product that is, um, you know, going to meet going to meet everyone's uh, specifications and needs to the best of your ability. So kind of filling that middle space um, and getting everyone to kind of come together. I think that's a good lesson. I love that. Those are those are great lessons. So we're gonna geek out. I have some really specific questions about tagging. So we're gonna go a little bit level down just to. Um, really understand uh, how you did things. Um, you know, how did you come up with the right letter taxonomy? Apply it to your results, and just as important, how did you assess that tags used would have, you know, some level, you know, industry acceptance and 
and the global consistency, you know, like the all the important stuff that sometimes matters. Yeah, sure. So um, the, the, the first was, I, I sort of touched on it earlier, collaboration. Um, we, we worked hand in hand with our, with our partners in the Office of General Counsel to come up with, with the taxonomy. So um, what we ultimately decided on, I mentioned this idea of kind of making sure we meet everyone's needs. We, we bifurcated the taxonomy into two kind of big buckets. One is a core taxonomy that covers the eight key areas that we think uh, hit on what, what, what anyone searching the rule book looks at. And I'll just list a few of them. Uh, you know, the security type or what, what type of security are you talking about with broker dealers, right? Stocks or bonds, really. Um, what type of firm are you? Uh, what type of customers are you dealing with? Retail or institutional? Um, account opening and closing and maintaining accounts, servicing accounts, uh, obligations and duties, regulatory processes, and then one that we thought was was pretty important, which was numerical references. Because ultimately, what a lot of people look for when when they look at a, a regulation is, you know, what are what are the thresholds in terms of, you know, what does this mean in terms of time? Is there a timing threshold? Uh, is there an age threshold? Something that's very important in providing financial advice, namely uh, on the upper end, right, providing advice to seniors or uh, the minors, right, making sure that uh, you're not providing advice to, to minors and there's always an adult involved, and then monetary thresholds. So I think the, the first, the core taxonomy hit those eight core categories, and that's what allows you to do that, that Macy sort of cross-filtering, you click across different buckets and you have different fact patterns. But uh, again, this this concept of making sure you're you're capturing the some of the granular, more specific, more detailed uh, questions that that our general counsel uh, colleagues flagged, and those are: what if someone has a very very specific product question? Not just is a security type debt or equity. What if they want to know if it's an annuity? Uh, what if they want to know if it's a sovereign bond? Uh, what if they want to know if it's a collateralized mortgage obligation or options or something much more granular? So we created we created a separate or supplemental taxonomy that's that's for drilling down to the real, real specific uh, um, kind of detailed textured type of inquiry that that we do very much get on a day to day basis. But uh, that's not as much suitable for cross filtering because of the sheer volume of tags. But it allows you to say pick out which FINRA rules pertain to sovereign bonds, which again is a, is a very nuanced type of thing. And how did we uh, gain some level of industry acceptance? We did a lot of demoing. I mentioned we did a demo of the pilot. Uh, we also had a reg tech vendor who, who does this stuff day to day for a living uh, for regulations around the world. They essentially checked, cross-checked, uh, opined on, commented on our taxonomy and we, you know, we, we incorporated their feedback. In addition, we created a working group, an external working group of compliance professionals and, of course, law firm folks uh, who work with the FINRA rulebook and securities law. They also checked, cross-checked, vetted it, gave us their input, which we also incorporated. Um, we presented to our regulatory counterparts around the world. Uh, we presented to securities industry uh, trade associations. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly, we got internal buy-in from our subject matter experts, um, not not just generalists who understand the FINRA rulebook, but the, the actual people who are responsible for drafting the rules. And we got a buy-in from up top. So that was kind of our vetting and checking process. That sounds like a very easy, short process. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I love the thoroughness of, of tagging and and getting buy-in from everyone and consistency. I, uh, thank you for walking through this. It sounds like a, a very thorough effort that really took a lot of dedication to take from beginning to end. Uh, what I find when I build um, applications and products and um, things that could be useful to others um, is, is that it's important to sort of think of use cases, um, you know, so that whatever you know, thing you create is actually used. You know, it's not just cool. It's not just a science project, but it is actually used. It's actually useful and reliable and all that. So what are the applications in the industry um, uh, that, that you had in mind? And do you see them to be uh, useful for that purpose today? Yeah, sure. So 
Um, I'll just kind of flag something which which I'll, I'll get to in a minute is w we launched the tool in, in October and we also published a report accompanying it, which which I would encourage anyone to check out on our website. It's called a special notice and it goes through through everything and, and lists out our journey, um, our use cases, our economic analysis and, and uh, our, our future future thoughts and, and questions. Um, but but also and to go directly to your question. Um, four kind of things we focus on, and these are outlined in, the, in that document, in that special notice. First is the, the use case. First use case, searchability, uh, navigability of the FINRA website and specifically the rule book on the FINRA website. So um, if there is any sort of event-driven visit that takes you to the FINRA rule book, and what I mean by that is you're a firm and you're looking to create a new financial product or a new business line, or you're looking for some sort of internal uh, training or education uh, or you're looking at risk assessments or audits or internal inquiries, a whole, whole host of things that might bring you to the FINRA rule book to, to check the, the obligations. Um, and this just provides a, a, what we think or what, what we hope people will, will think is an improved navigation experience and an improved uh, capability to find uh, potentially relevant content and, and obligations to, to then work off of. Second is, uh, and this ties into the API, rule mapping and regulatory change management. So the API allows subscribers to the API to pull rule content and link it to their internal policies and procedures. Um, you can access past versions of tags. I mean, that that's coming down the line, right? Past versions of tags as those change. Um, you can get, as I mentioned earlier, the automatic updates. And this really helps firms uh, or facilitates the process of identifying uh, interpreting and complying with amendments and changes to FINRA rules, which again, if you're, if you've got multiple jurisdictions that you're seeking to comply with, having that kind of tool built by a regulator for the industry, um, it can add a lot of value, we believe. Third area, resource savings, uh, you know, reducing the amount of time and resources needed by firms, um, freeing up, you know, senior staff time to devote to other activities, and uh, lastly, perhaps serving as some sort of impetus for the regulatory community um, to, you know, work hand in hand with with uh, with FINRA to develop these types of global uh, tags. I love it. Um, thank you. Those are great use cases, and, I, and 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 thank you for all the hard work you've been doing, you and your team, and the experts and everyone who contributed. That sounds like a, a massive effort. I have I have a little bit of time left. I want to ask a few more questions. Um, and uh, specifically about sort of what's next. And you started alluding to um, perhaps working with others, perhaps working with the regulator community. Um, you know, what's next for, for your effort? Yeah, sure. So um, most of our engagement with, with uh, regulators has come through one-off discussions with our regulatory counterparts who had, you know, wanted demos and specific questions of, you know, how we got to this point. Uh, we also are part of a, an international group called the uh, Global Financial Innovation Network, or GFIN. It's essentially the uh, our counterparts of, to, for, for FINRA's Office of Financial Innovation for regulators around the world. Um, and in terms of kind of tying that into to what's next, right, I, I mentioned the special notice that we published. It is a 60-day comment period that's open. Um, and, you know, that comment period closes on December 20th. So, um, you know, not only does, does the special notice describe the project and our journey, um, but it asks a whole host of questions in terms of what is next. So if, if I think there's one kind of key takeaway, uh, first is hopefully people kind of get a grasp of, of what the tool is and maybe can go on FINRA.org uh, under rules and guidance. You can see a link to explore the rulebook, maybe play around with the tool, see how it works for you. Um, but what is next is, is the key question. What, what this initiative is, is it's a prototype, essentially a robust one, but a prototype applicable to 40 FINRA rules. Um, we have certainly more than 40 FINRA rules. And the question that, that we ask in this special notice, maybe the key question is, what's next? Do we tag more rules? Do we tag ancillary documents to rules, right? Like enforcement actions, notices, guidances, updates, things like that. Um, and if we do expand our tagging effort, how does that get done and who does it or what does it if we use the technology? So uh, is it FINRA that continues to do it? If so, who do we build out a team? 
Um, do we kind of dedicate more to it full time? Um, do we, is there some sort of tech tool out there that I haven't heard of yet that can be uh, take all the taxonomy terms, feed that into the NLP model, and maybe use that uh, as a sufficient starting point to train the model and, and tag a, a broader segment of the rule book? Or do we open up to some sort of open source community, which, which is out there? Uh, the Linux Foundation is an offshoot called the FinTech Open Source Foundation. They have an active group uh, that's focused on regulatory taxonomies. It just so happens to be before we even uh, approach them with this project. Um, is open sourcing it an option? Um, I have to say we we don't know what what the final uh, outcome will be. But uh, again, my I think the call to to action would be just anyone who's interested and has a stake or or a viewpoint on this should definitely submit a comment um, or reach out to me or both. Um, and I'm happy to engage further with anyone who, who has further insights, ideas, thoughts, comments, opinions. Um, the, the future is very much, uh, it's very exciting and it's also to be determined. Oh, I love that. So where, where should people go? Finra.org or somewhere anywhere else? Yes, exactly. So Finra.org, top left corner, you see rules and guidance. Once you click on that, uh, on the right side, there's a red box that says explore the rule book. That's probably the fastest way uh, to, to do that. And you can get right to the FINRA rulebook search tool. You can see links for the, the special notice. There's an explanatory video um, and tutorial. And uh, and again, just uh, you can check the special notice out and, and I'm happy to engage with any interested uh, individuals. Oh, I love that. Um, maybe I'll ask you one more question. Um, regulators and technology. Uh, just sort of, I'm gonna ask you to take a, a crystal ball and predict the future. Um, it seems like that relationship between regulator and technology is evolving and evolving rapidly. I uh, I knew the term right attack, sub tech or sub tech. Uh, this is I've learned today. Um, where are we going? What should we expect? Like, what do you think? <laughs> well, yeah, crystal balls are 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 hard to uh, <laughs> hard to look into, particularly when uh, when it's looking at what, what other regulators are doing in different jurisdictions. Um, ultimately, um, one thing I can say for sure is all of the regulators that, that I am, am in regular contact with, and that's, that's really financial regulators, uh, are very interested and very curious and very uh, focused on understanding different technologies and how they're impacting the industry, whether that's blockchain technology, whether that's you know the different cryptocurrencies that are out there and the, there's a lot going going on there, whether it's the metaverse, which I know it's something you, you've you been looking into, uh, or something more heady like quantum computing, which might come down the line five, 10, or who knows how many years down the line. One thing I can definitely say is there is a, there is a dedicated interest in the regulatory community to understand these technologies and to um, really invest in understand in being prepared to react to them and know how they're disrupting the industry because technology is just snowballing it's it's growing and growing and it's bringing new market entrants it's bringing new products it's bringing new ways of uh interacting with customers and it's really changing the landscape the core regulatory obligations are always going to be there um but understanding how the that that broader landscape is, is changing is, is something that every regulator that I know of is is very attuned to and, and very focused on um, building an understanding of. I love that. Yes, we do share the interest in blockchain, crypto, and metaverse as well. But I think our interest in the future of law is much, much stronger uh, the mutual interest that you, you and I have. Um, Alex, this was a great conversation. And I'm just like yourself, I'm, I'm very excited about the future of law um, and that regulators will be actually using that future to provide better guidance at the right place at, at the right time in the right amount to the right professionals. So that to me, that's really exciting uh, that the, the, this, this will be an industry effort. And I definitely have seen a few examples of that on the financial side because the pressure on the financial side are much stronger and we see a lot of disruptive applications. So I think you see regulators to really stay on top of it and, and use technology for the greater good, which is the way technology should be used. And thank you so much for this conversation. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I very much look forward to it. Uh, this is my first 
conversation with the regulator for the benefit of the in-house community. Um, so I am really excited about this first. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, before I say goodbye, and I have to say goodbye, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, what is one thing you want folks to take away from this conversation? You said a lot of useful things um, you know, for over half an hour, um, and it's really hard to sort of summarize in one sentence. But you know, if you heard nothing else or you want to make sure the one thing that they take away, what is it? Um, sure, I, I I would say that um, with with a commitment to to something, no matter the resource constraints, um, if you really have a dedicated team committed to bringing a certain outcome, you'll be able to you'll be able to do it, no matter what context or, or where it is that you're working. So I, I think that was that was one real takeaway we had from this multi year effort from from building this taxonomy and ultimately launching it and and. I know you said one, but the last one is just, we, we very much welcome your feedback. <laughs> I love that you don't follow my rules. Uh, <laughs> that, that is just the best. Alex, so great. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining and I'll see you next time. Thank you for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Notes to My Legal Self. Know someone who'd make a great guest? Let us know. Self-nominations are encouraged. They are an act of courage. Remember, the future of law is bright. Enjoy your in-house practice. It's an adventure of a lifetime. See you soon.